People used to die to protect the flag. They really did a long time ago. It used to be that to control a battle, the commander or king sat mounted on his horse high on a hill, while on the plain below, the two opposing sides fought it out with sword and spear. It was, obviously, something of a melee, and it was very difficult to work out who was whom and which troops were which. That's why the flag was so important. The king, from his vantage point, could see his banners on the battlefield, so he knew where his soldiers were, and so did his own soldiers. To hold this banner or standard was a high honour, the standard bearer, a word we still use today. People would die to protect the flag because if the flag fell, the battle was lost. These days, with combat radios and satellite communication, the battlefield flag is an anachronism, but it's still symbolic. The flag hoisted at Iwo Jima on that statue of Saddam Hussein in Baghdad outside the Reichstag in Berlin. People still burn the enemy's flag, anti-war protesters at Berkeley, anti-Americans through the Middle East, Palestinians burning the Star of David. It matters naught. No one gets hurt when a piece of cloth is burnt, no matter what its colour or design. So, now the news that some muddle-headed pastor in southern United States has created an international incident by threatening to burn the Koran in protest at a mosque being built in New York. From Indonesia to the Middle East, Muslims promised bloody retaliation. President Obama, leader of the most powerful nation in the world, had to appeal for calm. He said the Quran burning would be a recruitment drive for al-Qaeda, and around the world, of which he's the most powerful leader, there'd be anti-American suicide bombings by the score. For a book. For a symbol. For absolutely nothing.